Okay. Um, so this is the second problem that we did where you have to find cosine x and cosecant x if the cotangent of x is equal to 2 radical 6 over 5. And you know that secant of x is less than 0. So the first thing, start with the given information. And that secant x being less than 0, this tells me that the cosine has to be, the cosine of x has to be less than 0 as well. So the cosine is negative, the secant is negative, because remember the secant of x equals 1 over the cosine x. So whatever the sign the secant is, the cosine has to be the same sign. So that helps us in one step. So I know cosine's negative. And the second part is I know the cotangent of x is 2 radical 6 over 5, which is positive. And just remember, you make positive numbers by having negative divided by negative or positive divided by positive. So the cosine or the cotangent is the cosine over the sine. So I already know that the cosine has to be negative. So that tells me that the sine has to be negative as well. And why do we care about the sine? Well, we care about the sine because the cosecant is equal 1 over sine. So if I know that the cosecant is equal to that 1 over sine and the sine is negative, that tells me that the cosecant has to be negative. So that's going to tell me that the cosine has to be negative and the cosecant has to be negative. So Pythagorean identities, co-functions, even odds, that's going to be helpful because that's going to tell us what we need to know when we're dealing with all of these. So, so now, step two. Step two, we have to relate the cotangent of x, which we know, to the cosine or the cosecant using identities. So we look at our identities. And we're in the, we could look at the co-functions. That's probably where we're going to need them to be. Or actually, Pythagorean identities. Pythagorean identities are going to be the ones for this one. We're not doing any co-functions yet. So I see cotangent and cosecant. That's what we need. That's going to be the relation, that, that link to solve this. So that's going to tell me that the cotangent squared of x plus 1 has to be equal to the cosecant squared of x. Well, look at what we know. We know that the cotangent is equal to 2 radical 6 over 5. So I, I can say 2 radical 6 over 5 quantity squared plus 1 is equal to the cosecant squared of x. So I got to square everything in here. So 2 squared is 4. Square root of 6 squared is 6. 5 squared is 25. So, and that's going to be plus 1 is equal to the cosecant squared of x. That's 24 over 25. 
and I'm going to use the idea of 1 is equal to 25 over 25. That's a big thing that you're going to have to use a lot when you're doing the uh, any type of identities with, uh, with trig. You're going to have to use 1 a lot, and you're going to have to use 1 in a lot of different creative ways. So that's one thing you need to get used to. And that's equal to cosine squared of x. Add these up. 24 plus 25 is 49 over the cosecant squared of x. I'm happy just looking at these numbers because they're both perfect squares, 49 and 25. So I have to take the square root of 49 over 25. And that's going to be equal to the cosecant squared of x. And I put plus or minus there because when you take the square root, you don't know if it was the positive ones or the negative ones. So we're going to get the cosecant of x is equal to, and now we know the cosecant has to be negative because the sine was negative. That's what we figured out up here. The sine was negative, cosecant has to be negative. So the square root of 49, 7, and the square root of 25, is 5. So we're going to get negative 7 over 5. And that's going to be our cosecant value. Now from there, we figured out cosecant, we need to figure out cosine. And we're going to be we're going to use sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. And the reason we're going to use this is the cosecant, sorry, that's what we're going to use, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And we're going to use this because we know that the cosecant is equal to 1 over the sine. Or the sine is equal to 1 over cosecant. Either way, we're going to take the reciprocal of this value here, so that's going to be equal to negative 5 over 7. So it's just the reciprocal of that cosecant that we found over here. So now, negative 5 over 7 quantity squared plus the cosine squared x is equal to 1. 5 squared is 25. 7 squared is 49. Plus the cosine squared of x is equal to 1. Let's subtract that 25, 49 from both sides. Now again, we got a 1. I know 1 is equal to 49 over 49, just using those denominators. So the cosine squared x is 49 over 49 minus 25 over 49. So take the square root of both sides. Oops, not squared, cosine x is going to be equal to, well, 49 minus 25 is 24 over 49. But I also know that the cosine needs to be negative as well. So we're going to take that negative version of that. Because remember, whenever you take the square root, you're going to get a positive or a negative. So so we want that. I dropped the square root sign. So that cosine x is going to be equal to negative square root of 24 over 7. Because square root of 24 is in the top, square root of 7 is in the bottom. Uh, simplifying this, 24 is equal to 4 times 6. 4 is a perfect square. So negative square root of 4 times square root of 6, because we can break down the square root into a product of square roots. And that's over 7. So that's negative 2 radical 6 over 7. There's your cosine of x. So they're a little bit more convoluted than just building the rectangle and going from there. Or building, not the rectangle, the right triangle and, and going from there. It's a little bit different, but this will help you kind of get through all of it. So hopefully it helps. If not, you can always send me a message and... 
get things cleared. So hopefully between the two different ways,